What's up guys and gals, it's your host with the most griever as always, bringing you guys Hunter's Guild Red Hood Chapter 16, and I don't like to give into rumors. I don't like to give into the Twitter buzz and people's speculation. My opinion is just as good as yours, just as good as everybody else's, meaning it means very, very little, especially here in the West, concerning what does or does not get axed in a Japanese manga series. However, I will say right now, that this chapter looks like the editors told our mangaka of Hunter Skilled Red Hood to sort of speed things along if he wants to sort of bang bang done with the with the series. Uh, it's very unfortunate. People have been making comparisons to other series in Jump where major things have already happened by chapter 9 or chapter 7 or chapter 10 and right now we're into chapter 16 and we've had a not an uninteresting exam arc but not compared to some of the ones that survived for far longer. So, something to be said for this. Um, this chapter has a lot of plot points we need to get into, but I needed to address the rumors right away. I so many people have been saying the series is going to get axed, you know, for a couple of months now. It's been like, oh no, the series is on its way to getting axed, the series is on its way to getting axed. Um... Whether it is or is not, right here, this chapter does feel that way. But without any official word as of yet, I'm not. I'm going to keep reviewing it as far as I'm concerned. I've been. I've been looking at Reddit. I've been looking at Twitter. I've been looking at these things. And at the end of the day, there's no official word. There's no official link. And uh, maybe this is just this. For all we know, this is the editor actually saying, "Hey." They'll let you keep going, but you got to get a move on with the plot. We need major plot elements. We need major stuff to happen really, really fast. And so, though this feels like a wrap up the story thing, it could be a wrap up this plot point so we can really hit the ground running. Could be that too. So always hold out. Don't don't always be a pessimist. Always be an optimist. So, all right. So that being said, this is chapter sixteen of Hunter's Guild Red Hood. Now, Cinderella does end up showing up to the ironworks and stuff. Everyone's like, where did uh, the mayor and Vilu disappear to? Cinderella apparently has a relationship with Debonair. Uh, and even says, like, you, uh, you have to set aside our grudge for right now. Potentially, Cinderella was the one who hexed Debonair to begin with. We're not confirmed in any way, shape, or form of that. But she claims that the world is going to end. Then we jump back over to Vilu and the mayor, saying that basically the mayor is Geppetto. And Vilu is Pinocchio. That's pretty much where we're going with this one. And you know what? That is actually kind of cool. I did not expect that. I do like that idea. Ludwig Geppetto. You know? And I was like, all right, well, wait a minute now. Is that cool or is it not? And how does that tie in? Where's Pinocchio? Vilu is Pinocchio. And once again, this actually makes sense for the character. Because the mayor himself... As far as if you guys don't know the story of Pinocchio by now, I mean, Jesus, where you been? But uh, Vilu being basically creating life, uh, uh, being a doll, sort of similar to Gother from Seven Deadly Sins. Great comparison there. Uh, Vilu is basically a child raised like Gother, is a living doll. They created life, an artificial human, however you want to look at it. And that goes very much along with that's Pinocchio. Geppetto creates Pinocchio. However, and uh, I'm a real boy. Right? Like, we got that shit, and we have the magic of this one, right? So, also, him being Geppetto makes a lot of sense as a storyteller, someone who would have stolen the pages, wrote the story, and made Pinocchio the, the character, the main character sort of idea, right? His own creation and stuff, why he's insistent, and why he loves Vilu, because that's what Geppetto, you know, if you wish upon a star, all that stuff, right? So, realistically... I actually like this twist. I thought it was like, whoa, 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 what are we talking about here? But now it's sort of all coming back. It comes back to a, an actually just a, a good plot point. I don't mind this idea. I really don't. Though I will tell you one thing that I find uh, incredibly interesting is that uh, what Cinderella basically says about Vilu is explain that. 
uh, because we jump back and forth between the mayor and the first Red Hood, apparently, the ancient Red Hood, the first Red Hood. Apparently, Geppetto was the second Red Hood. Grimm is supposed to be the third. The Red Hood is supposed to be the one who writes the story of the book, writes in the true book, writes the scenarios, writes fate, writes everything. If you write in the book, it will come to pass. But what happens if the book contradicts itself? Then things veer off course, hence the missing pages from the book. That's what uh, Ludwig Geppetto did, the mayor. Geppetto ended up doing, ripped the pages out and blah, blah, blah. But what I really like here is not only the idea that, okay, Cinderella explains that you spend enough time around the kid because the kid has this magic. It's uh, the story threads and the change of fate written in the book for you, working together the mayor uh, and apparently the red list created Vilu using magic and the power of the pages. It was a combination. Apparently the mayor is a very powerful sorcerer. He's not a real boy. He's a living puppet, right? So sort of a twist on the whole Pinocchio storyline, right? Now, this is where I, I do like one thing that comes up that Cinderella says, because this is done in a lot of things, a lot of series, and this made me actually laugh out loud. I quite literally l o l right? I actually did. And that's because Debonair goes, you used magic to create life? That's forbidden. That's taboo. And Cinderella says, yeah, that's a taboo you guys made up just because. And it's like, wait a minute now, wait a minute. I have to say probably my favorite part of the chapter right there, because usually there's a reason for it, right? Like uh, Full Metal Alchemist. No spoilers for that, but in Full Metal Alchemist, I mean, it's chapter one. Creating human life, trying to bring somebody back from the dead is not, it, it's taboo for a reason because it, like, it can't be done. It, it goes horribly wrong. There's a rebound. You see, you know, there's a bunch of shit there. And that's a core rule. See, Full Metal Alchemist's perfect power system because it never changes the system. The system always works within the bounds since chapter one. I do like that about Full Metal Alchemist. But here, they're basically saying, because we've seen that before, like, oh, you can't do that magic. That magic's forbidden, and there's never any penalty. You know what I mean? You read all these shonen mangas, and it's like, oh, that forbidden jutsu, that forbidden sword technique, that forbidden style of fighting. And it's like, you know, in One Punch Man, there's a forbidden style of fighting. In, um, in Naruto, there's forbidden jutsus. And, friggin', and it's more like... A group of people decided, okay, it's either too powerful and they don't want to deal with it, so they're selfish, once again. Uh, it's morally ambiguous to this set, once again, this set group of people who decide the rules, uh, and et cetera, st stuff like that. So I love for once, this is called out. It's like, because apparently it works out just fine. Vilu is a living puppet. They created life, but Vilu is not destroying the world. He's not a tyrant or anything. He's not all powerful by the looks of it. Like he's got this unique ability to make the book not work, which is their end goal anyways. But here it's just like Cinderella just goes up and I know I'm harping on this, but I just love it because you see it in almost every shonen series. There's always taboos and you can't create life. That's the realm of, you're stepping a foot into the realm of God. It's been done in fiction so often. Don't create life. It's, it's wrong. But here, it's like, you guys just made up that rule just because you felt like it. It has literally, there is no detriment for us trying to do that. It, it works. It's not, it doesn't, we don't lose an arm or our sanity or anything like that. There's no consequence. We literally just are powerful enough in magic. We can create life. You guys just don't, don't like us doing it. That's rule number 86 on the rules I made up because. And I love that. I love that because that is done in so many series. And finally, someone actually called out the bullshit within series. I love it. I really do. It was a great moment. Now, but that's not why we're here. We're here to review the rest of the chapter. But that is a highlight. If nothing else, if 100 Skills gets canceled tomorrow, that moment alone, I'm going to crop that out. I'm cropping that out because that is a fantastic moment. That's the best moment this week in all the chapters. That's just a fact. Because for once, after years of fiction, decades of fiction, somebody called bullshit. Uh, so I love it. I love it. So... Uh, the mayor is revealed to be the second Red Hood, as I already said, um, and uh, then the ancient Red Hood, who we never really see his face, he uh, or she uh, says that this is the true book, explains the true book, and basically says it's it was gifted to us by higher beings. Ba basically, by the sounds of it, gods slash aliens gave them the book, 
and it's a book basically uh, the, a manga's book within the manga, right? It's the manga's storyboard. Like you drop this book in in One Piece, and they can write the story of One Piece. They can change the world of One Piece and stuff, right? So everything that's written in this page is happens. So they write the present, they write the future, and potentially they write the past. They write the this is the true history and the true future of the world. Everything that's written in the book will come to pass. It's just a set rule. So it's. Uh, a tome of inverted reality is what they call it now so that being said there are pages to this book and the world acts on based on the number of pages now we don't know the full limitations here it's only one chapter we delve deep into things but pretty much they have the book because the duty of the hunter's guild is to add scenes to the book and bring story to the world but it seems like this is an evil intention because it's like okay but what happens if you just didn't write in the book? And they sort of go down that line a little bit, but apparently, so there might be a consequence for them not to continue writing in the book. And you can't just write happily ever after by the looks of it. Apparently you have to create monsters. You have to create this because he brings up, the, the Red Hood brings up, like we maintain the world this way because uh, we created dragons, witches, werewolves, all of them. We created all of them. And Vilu hates them for this and says, like, all the people that died, all the people that suffered, you know, uh, Bonkers family killed by giants. There are people that have lost loved ones. My, my village was destroyed. The hamlet was destroyed. People committed suicide due to the werewolves. What have you done? Like, why did you need to make those things? So, asking the real questions here, but there's a lot of cool monsters designs in a couple of these shots. Too bad. Uh, people are saying, too bad we won't get to see them. And once again, I'm holding out that sliver of hope that potentially we still get more Hunter's Guild, uh, Hunter's Guild red hood now uh but apparently the guild has uh put many countless stories of hope but also stories of despair and what is done is unforgivable according to the mayor and the red hood said but it must be done it's necessary to maintain the world now what does this imply will the gods slash aliens come down and and destroy the world if they don't write in the book do they have a set number of disasters that need to happen like well, we can't write happily ever after every single page. Every third page needs to be a story of woe or a story of tragedy. Like, like they have to check, like they have a check mark of all the genres and story tropes they have to go down and stuff. We don't know what the limitations are. We don't know if the Hunter's Guild has gotten too big for its britches because apparently the mayor wants to eliminate this system, hence why they created Vilu. Now, this is where, uh, Cinderella, we jump back to Debonair and Cinderella and stuff, and they're just like, you need to detain, uh, you know, uh, Vilu was built to destroy the guild. The kid's a walking bomb. And basically saying that he's a, that the mayor was a sorcerer that uh, used to work for the guild, and he was really close to the book. He was the second Red Hood. And he was sick of the, str the, the stranglehold that the guild had over the world, so he erased his name from the records and turned traitor. Now, the, did he erase them in the true book? He stole some pages. Did he write, nobody remembers the second hood? Because that couldn't be the case. He must have deleted like physical actual records, but he didn't do that in the pages because then if that were the case, if the book controls the reality, then this current Red Hood would not be able to remember that he is Ludwig Geppetto, right? So there is that. Um, but apparently he did swipe a handful of pages and then he joined the list taking up the cause of freedom from the guild. Now, the list seemingly is so far created up of, right now, a witch and a werewolf. So I'm going to assume that, once again, the higher-ranked people in this world, that, like, dragons and witches and goblins and all these creatures were created to become the evil. They were written as the antagonist, as the villain, uh, or villains. And they hate this fate. Like, uh, this, is, this is actually getting into a deep... Uh, philosophy sort of idea, and uh, certain series touch on this. Uh, Full Metal Alchemist touches on it. Death Note, Gundam Seed, a lot of these touch on this, but like uh, uh, Shaman King touches on this huge, huge. And without spoiling anything, but is it a sin to just be born the way you are? This is a, a true statement in our reality and in a lot of works of fiction when you get into these deeper meanings. And by the looks of it, they were written to be villains, and they don't have a choice in the matter. They are written to become villains. They are created to be villains, and they don't have a choice. Very Lucifer, the, the devil was created to be evil. You know, is that, so we blame the devil for our faults, but really God created the devil. 
So why do we blame the devil? The devil was created by God to be the ultimate evil. That's not the devil's fault. He was never given free will or a choice in the matter by, by that you know, standing. And that's done in a lot of works of fiction and in reality and stuff. Is it a sin just to be born the way you are? So I believe that this is where we're going with this. And once again, this is why this chapter, though feeling very rushed, very paced, and very, uh oh, I'm feeling the, I'm feeling the, the, the axe coming. It's got so much potential right here. And I'm hoping this chapter is what's going to save the series. As I said, sliver of hope, ladies and gentlemen, sliver. My hand's not a sliver. It's a little fatter than that, but you know what I'm saying? So really, really just like all the implications this leads that the list is m probably made up of people who want to fight against the Hunter's Guild, not because they're evil, but because fate dictated how th that they're villains and they want to fight against us. They want free will. What they're fighting for is free will. And the, the Hunter's Guild is uh, sort of acting like gods and dictating that they're chess pieces and they decide. Um, so it's one of those you know, ideology versus the, that kind of stuff. Fate versus free will. You know, that kind of idea. Destiny and fate versus choice. That's what we're going with here. And we sort of could surmise that originally in earlier chapters, but here it's laid out pretty bare for us, though it still continues on. Now, this all comes to a head because why would Cinderella tell Debonair and everybody this if that's the case? Because, um... You know, then the mayor's doing a good thing, right? Like the mayor joined the right side. I think we can all agree on that. But if this is the case, why is she so worried? Because he created a power. Because he's a powerful sorcerer. He has the pages and using a combination of both. He created in Vilu the power to nullify the book scenarios. Hence, nullifying fate. Grimm did not forget her memories. Grimm didn't lose her memories. She's been rewritten because the threads of fate that created Grimm as the main character, potentially the third Red Hood, what we're told in this chapter, she's supposed to be the candidate for the third Red Hood or just was the third Red Hood, for, but only for a set amount of time so far. And she has her story threads, everything that's been written in this true book and on the pages has been rewritten by a combination of the mayor's pages and the fact that she's had close contact with Vilu, whose entire purpose is a sphere of nullifying the book. It's a nullification. So the, the book has no hold on Grimm anymore. Grimm cannot be the main character when she's not even written anymore. You know what I mean? It's, it's really, it sort of plays with your mind a little bit and stuff. And I like that. I like that you have to sort of think about it. It's like, okay, so he sort of nullifies that. So she's technically not a main character anymore. She is according to the book, but the book isn't doing, the book's fallible now. Because of Vilu, when Vilu encounters scenarios that have been written in the book, then the book becomes wrong. The book is not absolute anymore. That is creating a disturbance in the force. You know what I mean? So that I find really, really interesting. I find that really cool. Um, now, of course, this is where uh, the Red Hood offers a Vilu to be able to read the book and all that stuff, you know, that, that kind of deal. Um, and, but apparently, as Cinderella explains, little by little, the presence of Vilu will influence the guild's written scenarios, the closer contact he has with the book. And it's like, okay, so we seemingly are at the end of the story already. And that's why people are surmising from this chapter. It's like, well, I guess the list has successfully done their thing. But as I said, there's still a lot of plot elements here that are very, very interesting that could still be continued upon. Uh, there's a lot to encounter here now. Um, so the idea is to let him join the guild as a hunter and let him erode it from the inside out. Then that's the plan and our job is done. Um, very, very funny scene where they decide to sit in like a little... They, they decide like, oh, all right, we're going to do this as a bedtime story. Yes, uh, bring a bed. Bring a queen-size bed. All right, Vilu, this is a very important situation. And I know the mayor is a traitor who just broke in, but everybody sit down, have a cup of tea, and let's do this. And it's so random. It's so absolutely random. Um... But then they look at the page. They can't read the uh, they can't read the language and all that stuff. But uh, the Red Hood then explains dragons, giants, demons, mermaids, werewolves. This page contains the concept designs for all of them: the heroes who hunt and destroy monsters, the villages that are destroyed, uh, legends, myths, fairy tales, fables. Everything is written in these books, and that's how it happens. Everything happens according to the scenarios that the Hunters Guild has written. So. 
as Cinderella points out once again, and they sort of reiterate this point a few times just to make sure because there's a lot of information here, there's a lot of twists and turns, it's very easy to get lost, but Velo has the power to nullify the book. So Grimm's memories have not been erased. It's her character concept in the book that has been affected by being in contact with Velu for too long. Velu, as a nullification, nullifies the book scenario. So who Grimm is relatively as a person and how she's been designed by the book is slowly being taken away from her. You know, so um, once again, Velu says, you're telling me it's all nothing but one big setup by the guild. All the people that have died, the people that have suffered, all this stuff. Are you insane? And Sen, so he gets up and he gets absolutely furious and kicks kicks the bed off and says, you know, why? Why would you do this? Now, the Red Hood answers, it's for the sake of the world. And all the concepts that form the structure of our world are in this book. What do you think will happen if Vilu comes in direct contact with it? The mayor wants to destroy not just the book, but the whole world along with it. And that's the end of the chapter. It says to be continued, so we still have another chapter at the very least. Um, but at this junction, at this junction, uh, does the mayor actually want to destroy the world? Because if this was, if this was the plan, get Vilu in there to eradicate the book. Um, all the concepts that form the structure of the world are also in the book. So it's sort of like, wait a minute now. We want Velu to destroy not the book, but a set number of pages in the book. Stop the Hunter's Guild from writing in the book, potentially. But not... To, the, 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 the controlling of fate is what the list wants to stop. Apparently the mayor wants to completely eradicate the book and the whole world along with it. But this could be more of a salvation thing. Maybe... The mayor has written a scenario or something that we don't know about. He's written a final scenario where the world basically doesn't... It basically goes to Eden. It becomes Eden or something like that. He's like They think he's trying to destroy the world. He's not trying to destroy the world. He's trying to get rid of this world. This world can't be fixed by the book. The book has corrupted it too far. But if we can destroy this world and let future generations start anew without the power of the book. You destroy the book you get rid of the people, the world along with it, then the, the world will grow anew. Maybe that's his plan. I can sort of see that. Because I really don't think the mayor's a bad guy in any uh, way, shape, or form. Um, but anyways, I definitely... And we can see that you can work your way outside of the book pages. Because that's how uh, like Lycaron uh, left the note for Cinderella. Because... The mayor must have written transport Lyricon. Lyricon is now in the ocean. Lyricon is here. Lyricon. Like, but you can avoid that. You can sort of misstep. If the mayor doesn't know, the mayor didn't know about the preemptive note. So the note is there just in case, right? Like, so there are ways around the fate and around the book and sort of idea. And Vilu is another method of doing that. So there's a lot, as, as I said, I think, I think that's enough for the review, But because this is going to be like 40 minutes. It's going to be like a teching-sized review. But there's a lot here to discuss. There's a lot here interesting. There's a lot to talk about. And I really do hope, I hope, that this chapter is more of a, the editor saying, pick up the pace. We need to get people like on board with the series before we get axed, rather than this is a hurry up, finish the series, because you're getting the axe. Know what I'm saying? Not that they would tell the public the moment that they know necessarily, but uh, I just feel like this chapter feels a little less, like the more I read it and the more I think about it, the more this feels like, okay, you had your slow burn, people need, need, need wow. We need bigger wows, we need you to hurry it up, right? Uh, the tortoise beat the hare, but the hare hit the ground running, you know? So um, if they cancel the race before the tortoise can beat the hare, Right? So uh, that's basically the idea here. Uh, so I'm holding on to that. I'm holding on to that hope. And uh, But what do you guys think? And did you like the chapter? I thought the chapter was really, really, really cool. There was so much plot uh, advancement. There was so much development. There's a lot of interesting concepts going on. Uh, there's a lot of ideologies going on. And, uh, and I would be very remiss, very sorry to see the series go when it has such great potential 
in it. So, uh, but let me know what you guys think down in the comment section down below. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and forth. And most importantly, as you all know, drink responsibly, as always, and keep that glass half full for this series, because I don't think it's done yet. I'm holding out hope. I'm holding out for a hero, or in this case, a red hood. And uh, anyways, that's the review, ladies and gentlemen. We will see you guys back here next time. Drink responsibly, as always. Peace out.